Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be actually sharing with you guys five books that have really, really changed my life in a way where it has taught me how to gain a little bit more control over my mind. It's taught me how to work and navigate through certain situations, not even certain, like plenty, a lot of situations and circumstances through my life. These books have really helped me navigate my life up until where I am today. These are just five, there's many more, but I wanted to share just the first five that came to mind. Uh, and they are right behind me. I am very, very close to the screen right now. So let me know, I'm filming in a different area of my house. I'm filming in my bedroom. And this is like where a lot of my books are because we read in the bedroom, right? So we're gonna get right into it, but before we do, I want to mention to you guys really, really quickly that I have a book club. I have a book club on Patreon. Um, you have to join Patreon to become a member of the book club. A lot of you guys have already purchased your books. I'm very, very excited. I've already gotten into the first two chapters. Um, and this is the book of the month that we're doing. It's called Medicine Women. And it's a pictorial history of women healers. This is the book that we're going to be reading, dissecting, going through, talking about um, for the rest of this month or next of September because we just started in August. This is a new thing. So this is a book for September. So if you guys are interested, head over to Patreon and you guys can become a member and just read with us, talk with us, discuss with us. I think it's going to be a really good time. But with that being said, I have seen a lot of videos on YouTube about people's favorite books, right? And you guys, excuse my hair, it is dirty and I need to wash it, I need to dye it and all that stuff. So this, I just I just like to just put it up and I just want to be a little bit more like myself on YouTube where I, I sometimes I don't want to put makeup on. Sometimes I don't want to do my hair. Uh, so if you guys were in front of my face, this is kind of usually what I would look like. Um, but the books that I'm going to be talking about are right here behind me. And they're not the, your usual typical type of books, right? So let's, let's get into the first one. Let's just dive right in. Okay. By the way, if you guys like this bracelet right here, this is an evil eye bracelet. They're available on my Etsy shop. I charge them on my altar. I bless them and um, then they come to you directly from my altar. If you guys are interested, Etsy shop link down below quickly. But the first book uh, is The Secret. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this book is, right? Uh, this book has really, really changed my life because here's one. Of, let me tell you something a little bit more like private. Um, I used to be very, very depressed, very depressed. And the reason I was very depressed is because I was going through severe, what did my, what did she say? My therapist? Um, extreme bereave, extreme bereavement, extreme bereavance, something like that, um, is what she wrote down in my records. So I was severely depressed very like bereavement so we as you can tell that's grief um and then my mom actually bought me the entire set of the magic the secret and the power she bought me the set and after i read it i i i got off my meds <laughs> and i um really started to take control of my life I started manifesting things. I, the first thing I ever manifested, I still have it to this day. Uh, it's actually a crow feather. And my boyfriend, I feel like my hair looks so like not presentable. That's all right. Uh, but he made a like, um, I don't have it with me, but he made like a smudge, smudge stick where he tied bunch of my feathers together I collect feathers everything that I find like feathers I love feathers especially crow feathers white feathers eagle feathers I love it um I even like 
Well, that's a story for Patreon, but like, I have feathers. And so, this book taught me how to manifest little, little, little things, small, small, small things, coffee, um, like little, little things, right? Um, and I, I put a bookmark here because I, in every book, I want to read an excerpt from there to you guys. And this one, what I saved is you attract to you the predominant thoughts that you're holding in your awareness, whether those thoughts are conscious or unconscious, that's the rub. I have noticed the older and older that I get, I read slower and slower. I used to be a very, very fast reader. And like, I used to get like really, really good grades and marks in school because I was a very fast reader. And when they would like, you know how they would like sometimes make you read out loud in class. I was like one of the best ones. But the older and older that I got, I, I found myself to not like, don't just read it understand it like grasp it like soak it in that's why I read slower now and I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to read slower but yeah you attract to you the predominant thoughts that you're holding in your awareness whether those thoughts are conscious or unconscious that's the rub so you need to know like where these thoughts are coming from you know, this is another thing that helped me so much in manifestation is because sometimes we think about the lack, like, dang, I don't have this. I don't have this much money. I want this, but I can't afford it. Um, or like, I want this relationship, but they're not paying attention to me or whatever the case may be. But we get into that lack mentality and that is a block. You know, when you deal with spirituality and like magnetism and the law of attraction, that is... Uh, a block, right? So this book is what kind of catapulted me into studying so much more of what I grew up with. I grew up in the occult. I grew up with my, like my grandparents practicing all these weird things. I grew up, but I was never like interested. I was always afraid of it. And so this book like kind of like jump-started my research and like my learning and all of that and I was I think maybe 16 maybe maybe I think uh or no I was way older than that but whatever the age I was it really did affect me when I read it so that's the first book the second book that I want to talk about is this it's called The Dance of Anger and it's by Harriet Golder Lerner. I guess she is a PhD. Now, this book is... So, okay. When you get older and you start reflecting back on your life, this is my opinion. You start reflecting back. And the things that... Sorry, I'm like burping because I just had some water right here um I'm on that time of the month so I was craving like greasy ass pizza and <laughs> so I had pizza yesterday so I'm just like just friends with you guys I had pizza yesterday <laughs> and I'm burping I'm on that time of the month okay <laughs> um but no like uh I was dealing with a lot of anger issues I would kind of like lose my mind um, when I would get angry. And it was after I hit my 30s, like before my 30s, I was calm, very peaceful, just like my name, Sheetal, just very peaceful, right? That's what my name means. It's peaceful and calm. And I've been like that all my life. But then, you know, when I hit my adulthood, like later on in adult, like after 30s and I started thinking back about my life and thinking back about the things that have happened and what I've been through what I went through um and all the unfairness that I never stood up for myself for I never stood up for myself and that's another thing that made me so angry later on in life is because I would never stand up for myself and so later on in life 
I would just, it, it would trigger me even more. And now that I'm an adult and I'm able to stand up for myself, I, I get angry or not at, only at the situation that I need to stand up in my, for myself, but also at the situation that, um, that I had to learn that and I didn't do that before. So I get mad at myself. Like, why didn't you do this before? You know, so this book really, really helped me navigate my anger issues. And I had a lot, you guys. I still do. I still, everybody, everybody does. Everybody does. Um, anger comes in the form of grudges, resentment, um, past anger, present anger, what, how, whatever. Anger comes in so many forms. Um, but this is a really, really good book. And there's actually something I saved that I wanted to read to you guys. Um, I always bookmark everything. So th this says emotional distancing from our first family, which is our immediate family prevents us from proceeding calmly and clearly in new relationships. Because I found that very fascinating. That is my phone. I think that is my grandmother. <laughs> That's so interesting. I actually really, really healed a lot of um, my relationship with my grandmother and my mother lately. I'm just going to let that ring if you guys don't mind. The phone is over there. I'm not about to get up right now. Um, but this is really interesting that she called me just around this time where I'm talking about emotional distancing from our first family. Um, I don't have any connection or relationship with my father. I did try, which I'm trying to maybe do a story time about that on Patreon. If you guys are on Patreon, um, about talking about that experience, I reached out to him after almost 40 years, like I'm almost 40. Uh, and so there, it was not a good, um, it was not a good experience, uh, but I'm glad that I did it, but like it, it didn't turn out the way that I expected. Um, and so emotional distancing from our first family prevents us from proceeding calmly and clearly in new relationships. You know, he was my father. So I do feel like sometimes that does affect the way that I perceive and think about men. Um, that's just, I'm just being honest, like sometimes it does, you know, because that's the first example I ever saw in my life. I didn't have, like we grew up sheltered, so we didn't have no other men around us. Like we just knew dad, grandpa, cousins, brother, sister, that's all we knew. So we don't, like we don't, we didn't. So, you know, it's very interesting. So that book really, really helped me deal with a lot of my anger issues. It really helped me calm down. It helped me find a way to navigate through a lot of um, like uh, ways that I wanted to know how to deal with anger. And listen, you guys, I've been in therapy. I've seen multiple therapists um, and I love them all. Like I love them all. Really sweet, sweet. But sometimes what these books gives me, the tools and the resources that books give me, um, it's just, I can learn to navigate because I remember what I read and I remember what these books taught me and it's very, very helpful. So that's why I wanted to share all this with you. Now the next book that I have that I wanted to share with you guys is Women Who Run With The Wolves. You guys, this is probably, oh, bury this book with me when I die. Like, I love this book that much. You guys, Women Who Run With The Wolves, and it's by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. I'll, I'll link everything down below. Um, this is Myths and Stories of the wo Wild Woman Archetype. Now, this is how much I've read. Do you guys see that right there? That's how much I've read, and I reread it, and I reread it. Um, that's how much I've read in... I, I would say I, would, I have been reading this book for about six, seven years. I can't get through the whole book yet. I think I'm going to die like reading this entire book. I love this book so much that I study every chapter two, three times. It is amazing. There are stories in here that goes into like women's psychological um, and like, you know, saying how some people are domesticated when they're actually wild, 
Um, you know, and like, oh, I love this book so much, you guys. And every single chapter is a different story. So you can just like kind of go to any chapter at any time and read any story. Um, one of my favorite one is the one about Baba Yaga. So if you guys know, you guys know, okay? Uh, this, this might be one of our book club books really soon because I love it so much. I want to finish it and it's, it's taken me like five, six years just to read that much. So you guys can tell, right? It's, it's a very deep book. Okay. It gets into feelings. It gets into emotions. It gets into relationships. It gets into dynamics of power, um, in a romantic relationship or relationship between parents, uh, and siblings just oh this book is amazing and I still in five years that's all I got to like you guys like for me I like to dive into a book and really try to understand the chapter understand the work understand the words uh, so in the past six years that's all I could get to and I might even like before I read the rest of the book I'm gonna have to go and reread those chapters too but you guys, I love this book so much. And I have a husky and he looks like a wolf. And I just, I feel like it's like all synchronistic for me in my life, right? Okay, so the next book that I wanna talk about is something that you guys might find a little maybe cringy, but that's okay. Um, this is something that really did catapult me into fixing my life and, and becoming healthier and happier after grief. Um, which is chicken soup for the soul and I think this is uh, this is the first one so it's 101 stories so here you have 101 stories by Jack Canfield and there's a bunch of other authors right there um, so when I was really really depressed going through grief I had this girl that was one of my best friends and her dad was actually working on our house um, he's a construction or something and I used to start hanging out with her and she changed my life She was like a fresh burst of air if you guys know who Amber Scholl on YouTube is I think that is who I would um, rem Like she reminds me of like this just bubbly burst of air like Amber Scholl or like um, I don't know who else I could even imagine somebody that's just very flamboyant like happy good energy just makes everybody happy and oh i just really loved her energy and one day we went to watch a movie and she pulled this book out of her backpack and she was like let me read you a, a story right and there's 101 stories in here and some stories are like two pages long some stories are like five sentences long so she read me this small little story and it changed my life. Um, I started crying uh, right before we watched the movie and, and she laid in my lap and she was like, you know what, um, you're too beautiful for this. I want you to take this book and read it, read all the stories, read everything in it and then return it back to me whenever you feel the need to. I still have the book. <laughs> I still have the book. And I still remember that. Um, this book really did change my life. It, it showed me a bunch of different kind of stories that make you feel like so many people go through so many different kinds of things and then how they come out of it, how they find blessings in it. It's uh, it's just beautiful. It makes it makes you feel how makes you feel how it makes you feel like you have hope. It makes you feel like if they can do it, you can do it. It's just you want to surround yourself with stories of overcoming, stories of um, like success, stories of thriving, stories of happiness, stories of joy. And I, I've been noticing that I've been, you know, really engaging in stories of gossip and uh, what happened to this person? What did that person do? What did this celebrity do? Like, I've been really engaging in those kinds of things. And so getting back into books is really nice for my headset. 
or my mindset, my headset, my mindset, because instead of like consuming all this content and energy, content is energy. So I'm consuming the energy of these people who are messing up in their lives and I'm just consuming it. And it is a guilty pleasure, but I think, you know, there's a reason that I got in, that I made, wanted to make this video too, that I wanted to get into this video. So from this book, I wanted to read this quote right here and it says, those of us who refuse to risk and grow get swallowed up by life. Because if we don't project our energy into our life, and we consume all this negative content, that content is gonna dictate our life. We need to dictate our own. You can consume whatever you want, but make sure that you are okay within yourself, you have peace, and you, you know that those things don't dictate your life and you won't let, um, you know, a huge thing is, um, whenever you start consuming a lot of bad content, you're gonna get a lot of nightmares. So pay attention to that too. But the last book, this video is getting pretty long. The last book, I don't think, I don't know if anybody knows about this book, but here is what it is. It's Dog Goes to Nursery School. And this is, uh, it's a first little golden book. I don't know who the author is. I really don't. Oh, by Lucille Hammond. And this is like, it's a book for little kids. It's like 12 pages long. And this is the first book that I ever owned. And this is a book that really, really helped me along so many things in my life. It's about a little dog that was um, at home, like with his mom and dad. It was just his mom, actually. And then uh, he had to go to school. He was really, really scared and he tried to get out of going to school uh, and then he found out that the very thing that he was so scared of, he actually ended up really enjoying. So this is one of my favorite books. You guys, if you're on Patreon, let me know. I can read this book to you guys. We'll have like a little dinner story time and I'll read this entire book to you guys. I think that would be really fun if you guys are on Patreon and let me know if you guys would like that. But that is all my books. Remember, if you guys are interested, where, where is it? head over to Patreon for our book club. We're going to be getting into Medicine Women. And that was a long video. Thank you guys so much for sitting here listening to me. And uh, let me know which books you're interested in that I showed you. And let me know what is your favorite book and why. And I'm going to read all the comments because I really want to know your favorite books and why. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye.